Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first green day with AMC stock in quite a while. AMC is up 3% at the time of recording this video, and you are not seeing the one thing happening today that was driving AMC stock down recently, and that is those deep in the money puts. You're actually not seeing it today. This is the first day that this has not been a thing. So you see what's happening. AMC stock is up 3%. Some of the factors that we're going to talk about here in this video look very bullish as well. We do have a couple earnings left here in after hours that we're also going to look at. And we did get economic data that came, that came out today, which was pretty strong. Kind of bad for what the Fed needs to do next. So let's get into all of this information. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So number one, AMC stock has been going down because hedge funds have been synthetically shorting AMC. They've been synthetically shorting AMC by buying these deep in the money puts now what that does for obviously every put that equals 100 shares well market makers they have to go out and short stock in increasing levels as more of these options have been purchased and that is what you have seen day after day after day some days you're seeing trades worth five or ten million dollars a piece and 10 20 30 of them on any given day this led to a lot of shorting by market makers well, you're not seeing that same kind of activity here today. And this really just lets the price action figure itself out. Without the excess synthetic shorting, you can kind of see where supply and demand are. And you're seeing that AMC is green today. So I think underlying, if you take out the synthetic shorting that hedge funds have been doing, the picture is not as bad as you would think if you look at the chart of AMC. After all, AMC's earnings were great, and it looks like we're going to be to a place of break-even, free cash flow positive, or even a net profit by the end of this year. So as the short thesis has been getting chipped away at, the stock has actually fallen in the same time. Meaning from last earnings to now, AMC stock has dropped from $6.11 per share to four dollars 62 cents per share that math just doesn't math so let's take a look at the option activity here today you are seeing four orders totaling 1.34 million dollars positive order value of zero percent instead of those deep in the money puts even like we were seeing yesterday i i, I mean huge orders that were coming through you were seeing out of the money puts being purchased. You're seeing the $3, $4, $3, and $3 puts being placed. Uh, September 15th, July 21st, and August 18th are the expirations that are being targeted. Now, this doesn't create the same synthetic shorting pressure because when they are out of the money, market makers, they don't have to go out and um, almost immediately short stock. If AMC does go down... Well, then, yeah, they have to short stock, but AMC is not at $3. Even that $4 put, the price they paid is $127. That means technically market makers wouldn't have to short any stock until, what, $2.63? Then they would have to go out and short stock you're far from those prices so you're not seeing that same level of synthetic shorting that has you know typically happened with amc you're not seeing that here today so a little bit of price discovery now if we take a look at the overview for ortex with amc the short score is at 91 this is the highest uh level that you have been at really in recent memory, I, I can't think of another time where the short score was higher than this. And for a couple different reasons, the dollar amount currently sold short in AMC stock is $501 million. Estimated short interest of free float 
21.5%. Free flow out on, out on loan, 35.28%. Shares out on loan, 182.16 million. Days to cover, 6.82. Cost to borrow being uh, 56.5% and 100% share utilization. Days to cover being the biggest factor here that I think is pushing the score the short score higher and getting you closer to a squeeze like event the higher the days to cover the better it shows you the lack of liquidity that is in this name right now meaning the volume has been very low so the higher this goes the harder i guess bottom line it is for shorts to get out of short positions and i mean it's been increasing quite quite steadily this is the highest days to cover that you have seen in almost six months and you have seen some pretty decent rallies over the last six months time now if you take a look at the live cost to borrow rates that we are getting from uh, ortex you got 72 and a half percent for the cost to borrow average cost to borrow max at about a hundred percent cost to borrow minimum at 50 percent Interactive Brokers Short Availability has about 100,000 shares currently available with a 65% cost to borrow fee. So again, cost to borrow rates remaining high also puts pressure on shorts, but it also, you know, gets you, you closer to a short squeeze. The higher, the better, ultimately. Now, as far as the economic data that came out today, keep this in mind. The debt ceiling has since been resolved. It's basically a done deal. It's it's going to be resolved. Unless we get a credit downgrade from Fitch, which they warned is possible, even if we come to a debt ceiling agreement. So we you still have that risk that that could happen. But minus that, the markets are going to start to care about the economic data that's going to be coming out. Recession, no recession, soft landing, hard landing, no landing earnings these are going to be the things inflation these are going to be the things that markets really care about the most now private payrolls rose by 278,000 in may well well ahead of expectations adp says the private sector employment increased by a seasonally adjusted 278,000 for the month ahead of the dow jones estimate for 180,000 adp reported so not necessarily a good thing, right? It's good for the economy. If inflation continues to come down, this is a positive thing. But with inflation staying as high as it is, around 5.5%, the tighter the labor market gets, the you know better ultimately it's going to be for the Fed. The labor market right now is just adding more and more and more jobs. And it looks like they're going to have more work to do. This is leading to some voting members like Fed Harkin and Fed Barkin that are coming out or Barker. They're, they're coming out and saying that we should pause in June and potentially raise rates in July if we need to. And this looks to be the narrative that is starting to play out. We're going to make a separate video on this later today. So... If you don't understand what's going on with that, well, not a big problem. But long story short, you're about to get a pause. And then it's really going to be up to the data. Unless tomorrow's data that comes out is bad. And what you're going to get for tomorrow is the unemployment rate for May. You're expecting 3.5%. The current unemployment rate is 3.4%. This is historic historically low this is ultra low this is actually crazy considering the fed has r risen rates as high as they have as aggressively as they have now two things i want you guys to know if the unemployment rate were to jump to call it four percent just an absurd move that nobody was forecasting no economist is forecasting a four percent unemployment rate coming out tomorrow if that were to happen, very low likely, less than I would say 5% chance. But if it does, that's going to be a very negative thing for the markets because that's going to validate all of the recessionary data that we have gotten so far. And people are going to say, hey, you just cannot avoid a recession if the unemployment rate just jumped that much. But if it comes in even lower, that's going to be a negative thing as well. 
So best case scenario would likely be the unemployment rate going to like 35 3.6%, kind of around expectations. You could afford for it to go a little bit higher, but not too much higher. That's where this data gets tricky because it's up for interpretation. Now, the non-farm payrolls, you're expecting this to come in at 180000 As long as you are under or around 200000 I don't really see the, the biggest reaction off of this. If you are, call it, under 100000 probably going to be a negative reaction. If you're above 250000 going to be a, a negative reaction. So you really want to come in in line with expectations. Um as much as possible when it comes down to the non-farm payrolls tomorrow morning and the unemployment rate. You're also going to get government payrolls, average weekly hours, um, manufacturing payrolls, the participation rate. That's actually going to be very important because if, if you think about it, how do you grow the economy or grow GDP? You actually, you, you have to produce more goods or your participation rate goes up, right? You you see more people participating. You see the production rate essentially going up. For every one person, if one person can make five burgers in five minutes and the other one can make 10 in five minutes, well, you're going to get more done. You're going to be more productive with that, with 10 burgers in five minutes, right? So that will also be an important sub data point to the main data point. So that's what we're going to get tomorrow morning. Now, as far as what is actually happening here on the day today, the next thing markets are looking forward to and the news that we got today is the government, the treasury, will start issuing three-month and six-month bonds coming next week. And they're targeting about $65 billion for the three-month. We don't know for sure on the six-month. Now, this is really what a lot of people are talking about. How will this affect the markets? Because it's like quantitative tightening. When the treasury comes out and they list all of these treasuries for sale, that essentially is like pulling money from other places, whether it's equities, crypto, real estate, just different places, right? So it's very quantitative tightening like, and we'll see what the interest rate get slapped on that, I think that will also uh, have the potential to move the markets. But that's the next thing we got in store for us coming next week. Now, if we take a look at the economic uh, or the, uh, I should say, the Stanko Tracker data. Sorry, I'm just getting crazy calls over here. The Stanko Tracker data. We got calls for this Friday in the money, about 7,000. Calls out the money, 71 thousand puts in the money 23,000 and puts out of the money at 25,000 so not that much option activity really the next week you don't have that much option activity as well but for June 16th you're gonna have a lot of option activity and I'm quite honestly surprised we haven't gotten an update from the courts in a while it looks like any time now we should be getting an update from the courts and if places like the street and news outlets like the street are correct well the court case could be a very positive thing for amc after all the stock has fallen from six dollars recently to four dollars what 50 cents per share roughly today maybe you've priced in any bad news from the courts already we'll see what happens but that is going to do it here in this video. We have a lot to cover in the next videos. I really just don't want to make this like an hour long video for you guys. In the meantime, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.